Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review a large size resin printer from Elegoo, the Jupiter SE, which is priced at $700. It's a budget version of the original Jupiter, which costs $200 more, but shares similar major hardware and specs, such as the build volume of 278 by 156 by 300 millimeters, the 6K resolution 12.8 inch mono LCD screen, refractive UV light source, and the CNC grade 15 millimeter dual linear rail motion system. Given the lower price, some minor features are missing compared to the original Jupiter. For instance, the all-metal body and door are replaced by a red acrylic cover, the build platform features a simpler design, and the resin tray handles are replaced by two grooves. There's no LED light, and the more advanced touchscreen and UI found in the Neptune series has been substituted with a basic touchscreen and UI similar to the Mars series. Besides that, the appearance of the machine also looks less premium. In terms of additions, the Jupiter SE features a new resin pump instead of the simple feeding inlet on the Jupiter, which is similar to a pet water feeder. As claimed by Elegoo, the pump can not only feed resin, but also recycle resin and suck it back into the bottle. This is a really interesting feature, so let's see how it performs. I would like to thank Elegoo for sending us this machine and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. The box of the machine is large. It's 34 inches wide, 20 inches deep, and 18 inches tall. The size of the actual machine is not far from the box. All parts are protected by laser cut foam and are neatly packed inside the machine. Besides some standard components you would expect, like the machine base, anti-UV cover, resin tray, build platform, power supply, and some tools, we also have an air filter, two handles to install on the acrylic anti-UV cover, a pump, two sets of replacement bottom caps that contain two tubes, one to pump air into the bottom to increase the pressure inside, and dispense resin through the tube to the resin tray. The pump is connected to the USB port on the right side, and the air filter is connected to the USB port on the left side. For leveling, we still need to do it the traditional way by loosening four screws on the platform, putting the leveling card on the screen, and homing the machine. Apply pressure to keep the platform level, but avoid pushing it too much so the leveling card between the platform and the LCD screen can be removed with some resistance. Okay, the machine is now ready to use. I will start reprinting a test model, the Elegoo Rook. I found the sample G-code has a 0.05mm layer height and requires over 3.5 hours just for the sample print. I will re-slice it and use a 0.1mm layer height just to make sure everything is working. This rook took 1 hour and 50 minutes to finish, and the result seems okay. I will use the Mercury XS washing and curing station with Sunlu resin detergent and wash the model for 3 minutes. Then, I will cure it for another 3 minutes. The surface of the model is okay, but the top has some undried watermarks. The text is clear, and the mini stairs inside are printed nicely. Next, I will try to print multiple models on the build plate. No matter how many items you print at the same time, as long as they're the same height, it won't increase the print time. The whole plate contains 6 models, and it took 4 hours and 23 minutes to finish. All of them were printed successfully. I carefully removed them using a metal scraper, and fortunately none of them were damaged. After the same washing and curing process, let's take a look at the result. These tiny models are all 50 to 60 millimeters tall. When printing at a 0.05 millimeter layer height, we can see the details on all models clearly, especially the big Ben, or I should call it the tiny Ben. The level of detail is amazing, considering how tiny it is compared to a standard FDM 3D Benchy. As the resolution of this machine is only 6K, I would like to print a lizard with high detail and compare it to the 14K resin printer I tested last week. The print took a little more than 4 hours to finish. The laser engraved build platform does not stick as well as the traditional aluminum platform and the edges of the raft are lifting a little, but it seems the model itself doesn't have much impact. 
One of the legs was broken when I tried to remove the support, but I just glued it back. The details of this lizard still looks pretty good, but let's compare it with the one printed with the 14K machine. I can't see much of a difference between them. The back looks identical, and the close-up headshot also looks identical. I think as long as you print at a 0.05mm layer height, the quality difference between 6K and higher resolutions won't be that much. After that, I will print an Oscar trophy. I printed the base and the body of the trophy separately, so it can print faster. As I was printing at a 0.1mm layer height, and printing this 145mm tall model took 5 hours and 19 minutes. The surface looks pretty smooth, and I can't see layer lines at all. I will spray some gold paint on the body and black paint on the bottom, and the result looks pretty good. It doesn't look like a 3D printed trophy. Finally, I will max out the Z height of this machine by printing a 300mm tall Eiffel Tower. As I printed this model at a 0.1mm layer height, you can see the number of layers is 3000. This print took almost 12 hours to finish. Compared with the one printed by FDM, the print quality difference is huge. As most washing and curing machines can't fit 300mm tall models, I have to use a Home Depot bucket to wash it. For the curing process, there's also no machine that can fit it in, so we have to cure it using natural sunlight. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The build volume is massive. It may not sound like if you already own an FDM printer, even an old CR10, but for resin printers, it's one of the largest budget machines, and the $700 price makes it probably the lowest available for a machine of this size. 2. The hardware is solid. It uses a large metal resin tray and an all-metal build platform. The motion system uses two thick CNC grade linear rails to support the large build platform. Even when bearing the weight of a large print, the machine seems to handle it quite well. 3. There are some additional features such as the air filter. Elegoo calls this an upgraded filter. While it doesn't look super different from regular filters found in previous machines, it's still nice to have an extra layer of protection on top of the enclosed machine cover. 4. One of the unique features of this machine is the resin pump. It can be helpful when you need to maintain a certain level of resin in the tray. It uses a water probe that keeps the air pump on to increase the pressure in the resin bottle and dispense resin, much like a simple soda dispenser. This mechanism works effectively when you need auto-feed resin, but I will also talk more about it in the cons section. Now for the cons. One. There is no auto-leveling feature, so you still need to use the leveling car test and adjust the screws to set the distance between the platform and the LCD screen. This process can be challenging, especially for beginners attempting to level such a large platform. Just adding a few strain gauges at the corners of the LCD screen for auto-leveling could be a huge improvement. 2. With the bigger print volume comes a bigger resin tray, requiring you to pour much more resin than necessary to reach the same level as a smaller tray. So, you may have a significant amount of excess resin after the print is finished. This is where the resin pump recycling feature comes into play. While the pump can only suck up resin above a certain level, even if you tilt the tray slightly to allow it to draw more, you still need to manually pour back the final 100ml or so back into the resin bottle. 3. The USB connector of the pump is too loose. I accidentally bumped into it and disconnected it multiple times when putting the cover back during the tests. Additionally, the size of the replacement cap for the resin pump is designed for Elegoo resin bottles. However, you're not limited to using only Elegoo resin, as the Elegoo bottle is very similar to some other brands. For example, the Anycubic bottle seems to fit as well, but it won't fit every brand. For example, Sunlu bottles have a significantly different diameter for the cap that can't be used with the resin pump. 4. As the maximum Z height is 300mm, I can't fit the model in any regular or slightly larger washing and curing machines that I have. I also don't see any options available on the Elegoo website. 
So when processing large prints, I ended up using a Home Depot 5 gallon bucket to wash the model and natural sunlight to cure it. In conclusion, there aren't many choices in the market for a budget large size resin printer, and the Jupiter SE stands out as a fully functional machine with a solid build at the lowest price. While its resolution is only 6K, which may sound lower compared to the latest 12K or even 14K machines, when you print at a 0.05mm layer height, the details on the print are not far from those produced by a 14K machine. So this aspect won't be a concern at all. However, if you have high expectations for the so-called automatic resin management system to feed and clean up resin completely automatically, that's not the case. The resin feeding feature works okay. It's especially useful if you need to make a big print that requires more than a 1kg bottle of resin. You can pour a whole bottle into the tray and connect another bottle to the pump to let it feed automatically instead of babysitting the machine and pouring resin when required. But the recycling feature that only sucks up to around 80% and requires you to pour it back into the bottle manually may not be a game changer compared to a machine without a resin pump. Anyway, if you're looking for a budget-friendly large resin machine, you can take a look at this Jupiter SE. It's the lowest price you can get for a machine of this size. I've included the link to it as well as to my website, auroratechchannel.com, which monitors the prices of over 150 popular 3D printers under the description. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.